Good afternoon and thanks for joining us. I'm Judy Simpson. New agricultural facilities are coming to the University of Vermont. Over the next few years, UVM will invest $10 million for new construction and renovation to its historic Miller Farm. It is the first major investment in the farm since it was built in the mid-1960s. The construction and renovation will be spread over three phases. Phase one began in mid-February. It's out with the old to make way for the new at UVM's Miller Agricultural Farm in Burlington. What we're doing is taking down the old barns that are very highly visible from Spear Street and putting in their place two new barns, one for our instructional programs and one for research. A two and a half million dollar, roughly 13,000 square foot teaching barn and milking parlor. It will be a new home for roughly 34 cows used in the college's instructional program called CREAM. The students essentially take over every task to run a successful dairy business. CREAM has been in existence for about 27 years. It is one of the signature programs in the College of Agriculture and Life Sciences. In 2010, UVM sold its then 255 head research herd to instead focus on the instructional herd. Ann Vogelman says the CREAM program has continued to grow in popularity. This is the first phase of a three-phase $10 million upgrade of the farm, a project the college has been saving for for 10 years, and several donors have also contributed. Vogelman says a lot has changed since the old facility was built in the 60s, including the size of the cows. They've been bred to be 30 percent larger than they were 40 years ago. And more space will allow the program to grow. And so we'll be ramping up from 34 animals to perhaps as large as 50. And the other part that we plan to do is that uh, in the past this has been a program that's run through the academic year and we're going to move it into the summer and expand the offerings for you know, students and schools in the surrounding region that don't have access to this kind of experience. I feel like it'll be a new step for the program. Carolyn Ricardo is a sophomore and the student advisor for CREAM. She says she came to UVM because of the hands-on CREAM experience. I'm from New York City. I was not in a dairy farm ever before. So when I was applying, I was like, this is amazing. I, I want to be a part of this and learn from it. So I think that's what it's going to do for people thinking about UVM. It's going to be an experience that you won't really get anywhere else. Now Carolyn plans to become a veterinarian. There's a commitment to this program. And Vogelman says the unique cream experience gives her a leg up. Students get to have first-hand experience working with large animals. The vet schools just love applications from our school. Along with being Cream's home base, the new barn and milking parlor will be used by animal science majors for a variety of course and research projects. Construction should be completed in mid-September. Phase two of the project is construction of a new dairy research barn. It's scheduled to begin in the spring, and phase three will be the renovation of the historic Fitzsimmons Arena. Well, joining me now are two guests from UVM's College of Agriculture and Life Sciences. Tom Vogelman is the dean of the college, and Professor David Kerr is the interim chair of the college's Department of Animal Science. Thanks so much for being with us. Pleasure. Let's take a step back for just a minute. It's been about 50 years since the original investment in the UVM farm. Tell us a little bit about the farm's history. Oh, it's been actually a very rich history. Um, for those who look at the uh, old historical photographs of the University of Vermont, the original University Farm was actually on the right-hand side as you proceed down Main Street. Oh, no uh, And it's, the footprint is now occupied by Jeffords Hall. Mm -hmm. But I remember being an undergraduate at the university in the early 70s, and they had torn down that old barn complex to start the renovations out at Miller Street. Uh, and a little side note of that, there was a lot of chicken manure left over, <laughs> and I would beat the other professors out early in the morning to collect mushrooms. <laughs> there you go. So 50 years ago, the main focus of the farm was on cows, and cows are going to remain the priority, but you envision sort of the new facilities as the university's farm of the future. How so, David? Well, it's, uh, it's changing from an older pipeline milking system to a new parlor system, which will be much more efficient for our students to, uh, to work in and much more reflective of the, of the dairy industry itself. So we'll be expanding the, the herd size up to probably 50 animals, and yet um, there really won't be that much more labor for the students. So it's going to be a win-win all, all around. We'll have <clears throat> more animals to work with and, and more milk being produced. 
because right. currently, as I understand from the student, that they, the, the milking uh, facility itself is on a track and you have to go cow to cow to milk them. Right. So the new parlor, the cows will walk in by themselves. That's right, yep. Yeah. They'll walk in and four on a side, they'll be milked uh, probably in shorter amount of time, so it'll, it may even be uh, easier for the cream students. But at the same time, having the larger herd uh, allows us to do some uh, more pilot study size research uh, on these animals perhaps some intensive uh, nutrition studies where we could feed uh, a, a specific f nutrient to an animal with the eye to uh, perhaps changing milk composition slightly, changing the mm -hmm. protein con uh, composition that then we would analyze at our laboratories back on uh, the main campus. Well, if there's anything that I've ever picked up covering dairy issues over the years is that it's always changing. There's always something either new to learn or something right. new in the industry. And so does this give the students then more of a competitive edge if they've got this kind of research they can work on? Well, well, definitely. Um, part of the, the, the CREAM program, where I guess we've got a number of missions, um, many of the students do go on to perhaps veterinary medicine, large animal veterinary medicine. A lot of them, though, go on to the, the dairy industry uh, itself, perhaps as nutritionists, um, understanding uh, um, you know, new new products, new testing, um, validation for for new products, etc. Um, so it's it really is a modernization, and will better prepare our students to enter the industry. Mm -hmm. And so, animal science is one of the most popular departments in the College of Agriculture and Life Sciences. What will the new facilities at the Miller Farm mean to students beyond that? I mean, we talked a little bit about the research, and but and these are this is going to be opening this up to students, I would imagine, from other departments as well. It, it will, yes. Um, as um, Dean Vogelman mentioned, in the summertime, we uh, try and encourage uh, students to come from, let's say, Middlebury or, or other parts of Vermont where they don't have access to such a cream program and they can get their hands-on experience with the large animals. Um, it's also um, central to our whole teaching mission. I, I teach the introductory class, ASI 1, and uh, our labs are down at the farm, so they all students, I have a hundred students in the class and they're all be exposed to uh, modern agricultural practices. And uh, we'll be uh, students from across campus from our plant and soil science department, for example, coming down to look at forage and how forage is prepared to be fed for the cows. Uh, so it really is a benefit for the, the university as a whole. Now for people who aren't familiar maybe with the CREAM program, can you tell me a little bit about what the students are expected to do because it's pretty intense. Okay, well, um, there is a, I would say, a very strong leadership component to that program. You're basically taking 15, 20 students um, <clears throat> from diverse backgrounds, and um, they have to work it out in terms of who's going to cover what part of the shifts, because milking starts at 3.30, and I think the last shift is about 10 or 10.30 at night. And it's at 3.30 in the morning. Yeah, that's exactly <laughs> right. And so um, you have to be an early bird and a very dedicated person to sort of see this through. Um, and so a lot of issues to work out. But then again, they also do projects. Uh, it might be a feeding regime. It might be um, something to do with looking at the uh, various microbes that are involved in, 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 in the animals. And so that involves a lot of coordination, and so the pressure's on to work it out. It's not only that, but it's also, too, um, the physical uh, welfare of the cows as well. Yeah, um, a whole host of issues there. Uh, these are very pampered cows. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yes, they're very friendly cows, too, I have to say. <laughs> they're, really, they're really great animals to work with, and that's uh, being in the animal science department. Many of our students come in um, perhaps more thinking of companion animals, dogs, cats, and not, not considering dairy animals. But once they get down to the cream program, um, they just fall in love with these big beasts. Yeah. That's amazing. Okay, so phase two of the Miller Farm renovation is scheduled to begin in the spring, and that involves construction of the new research dairy barn. Tell us a little bit about some of the more, more of the research that's done at the College of Agriculture and Life Sciences, and exactly how this particular facility is gonna help with that. That's excellent. Well, David? Well, a number of years ago, as you know, we sold off the main uh, university research herd. It was just not, um, it was just a monetary drain on the, on the system. Mm -hmm. So over the last 10 years, we've been saving money uh, to build this new facility. And it's, it's really going to help us. We, uh, we work with partner farms around the state uh, and 
at points we can borrow some of their animals or rent, if you will, bring mm -hmm. them back to UVM to do more intensive uh, research um, on them. So maybe we need to take blood samples every hour or feed them a specific ration for a certain length of time. Um, so this facility will give us that, that extra capacity. The old cream barn was filled with their 34 animals. Mm -hmm. There was no more room. Uh, but now we'll have uh, some excess space and we're building a new research barn as well so that we can continue to work with our partner farms and, uh, and con conduct research. I, I'm doing research on mastitis or animal, animal health, infection of the mammary gland. We have others that are um, looking into actually feeding coffee uh, grounds to see how that affects <laughs> The coffee change. milk, great! <laughs> well, it, it, does, it has a, ch a change in the milk protein uh, composition that m uh, may actually have quite the uh, health benefits for, uh, for human health. So down the road, you know, we don't know where we're going down the road as far as uh, specialty milks or um, if we can further link the uh, benefits of drinking milk for human health. That's uh, really what we're all about. That's amazing. Yeah, we haven't found a cheap source for chocolate. <laughs> no, not yet. <laughs> Too bad. Um, so to tell me a little bit about how this um, is sort of a unique experience for some of the students, because I can't imagine this happens on a lot of campuses. It, no, it does not happen on a lot of campuses. It's really one of our flagships, and it really is a, a draw for, this, for the students. Um, yeah, they enter this program, and they're, um, I mean, we do have a faculty advisor, mm -hmm. but uh, basically, the students are given um, uh, committee work to decide on the breeding of the animals, the nutrition of the animals, the welfare of the animals, uh, the sale of the animals, who mm -hmm. they're going to buy. So it's um, it's pretty uh, am amazing uh, um, program for them to get this experience in, in managing a herd and seeing what's involved in all aspects of the dairy industry. Including genetics and, and... The genetics, selecting the sires and the dams, mm -hmm. uh, etc. Yeah, yeah. And also naming them too. I noticed Na there's a big baby them. book, right. <laughs> naming book in the, in the office. Right. Yeah. The other one I really have to give them credit for is I'm not sure they realize that these cows have to be milked every day Christmas Day, etc. Right. When it's minus ten, minus twenty at three thirty in the morning, and they 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 get up, they're dedicated, and uh, just a lot of smiling faces. And so the third and final phase is the renovation of the historic Fitzsimmons Arena. What's being done, and who's going to benefit? Maybe we can talk a little bit about what the Fitzsimmons Arena is and what it was used for in the past. Yeah, well, the Fitzsimmons Arena, for those that don't know what it is, it's that um, building that's sort of shaped like um, half a pipe that's been cut off. Uh, and it's a historic building, so we definitely want to keep that um, in the farm complex for mm -hmm. as long as we can. And we do have plans to um, convert some of the inner parts of it to classrooms, and um, I think there's a, a place where you can show animals and things like that. Um, <clears throat> the reality is, is that phase is probably far off in the future because we will need to raise the money to do renovations on that complex. Mm -hmm. So we're biting off phases one and two for the teaching and research facilities and this other phase is out there, we're excited about it. But you know, visioning what a farm of the future, you always have to be keeping your eye on what's going to probably be relevant 10 and 20 years out and that's a challenge for anybody who doesn't <laughs> Good luck have with a, that. a crystal ball. But <laughs> right. on the other hand, uh, given the fact that the Northeast is poised to um, be strong in agriculture moving through the next couple of decades, we're, we're very excited about the role that this farm complex can play. There's always been a sort of a community aspect to the UVM farm. Um, how will Vermonters benefit from the work that's being done there? I would say uh, I, I can talk about a few things, and then I'll let David uh, mm -hmm. pick it up. But you know, one thing is that is truly unique about our university is that we have a farm complex that's embedded basically within a suburban setting. Mm -hmm. And given the interest in food and where it's coming from and how it's produced, this is a marvelous opportunity to educate the public. And in fact, we have about twelve to fifteen thousand visitors per year on the farm. Fantastic. We've got about 30 seconds left. <laughs> yeah, no, that's it. I mean, just uh, increasing the education of the of the population and the uh, the benefits of agriculture to Vermont is really what we're all about. And there's nothing better than seeing cows out there, too. <laughs> oh, there's nothing better. <laughs> well, I want to thank you both for joining us. And um, if people are interested in, in helping out, you're still raising funds? Oh, we're still raising funds. Yep. Just look us up online. There's a little green giving button at the college webpage, or just give us a phone call. We'd be delighted to talk with you. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you both for joining me today. Well, thank, thank you, you, Judy. That's our program for today. Thanks for joining us. I'm Judy Simpson. We'll see you again next time on Across the Fence.